Welcome to episode 217 of In Touch with iOS, the show that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies. I'm your host, Dave Ginsberg, and my host this week, uh, I'm sorry, my guest this week is uh, Dan Wasink. Uh, he's back on the show uh, from the Dan uh, Dan's Tutorials. Welcome back to the show, Dan. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Thanks for uh, asking me. Oh, nice. Yes. No, yeah, it's, doing well. It's been a while since you've been back, but I'm so glad you're back on the show. We've got lots to talk about and uh, talk about your mm-hmm. site as well. And uh, I know you're going to share a few of your tips that you share with the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. Jeff Gamets back on the show. Thanks for being here, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing well, and I'm always happy to be here. And, uh, and thanks, as always, for inviting me back. Absolutely. Always, always welcome and I'm glad you're here. And uh, Warren Sklar with his dog eating all his cables or is, is back on the show. How are you doing, Warren? You will notice that I got rid of the cables and scattered it with dog toys just to, to avoid another incident <laughs> like uh, the other night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm doing good. Um, wife is between me and you at this point, coming back from Chicago. There you go. Uh, son's here. So, you know, we're going to, this might be uh, the last week of podcasting for a little bit. We'll see how that goes. I'll, I'll let you know. All right. Um, because while the wife's away, the, the, the guy podcasts, I guess. Um, but yeah, good. Good to see you. Good. Glad you're here. Uh, so we got a good good amount of news this week. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, Apple's. Uh, we've got some rumors of when the, the Apple event is going to be happening. Finally, um, we, well, beta. They got a new beta that was released. Uh, Air tags, and as I mentioned, uh, uh, Dan's going to have a few tips from his uh, from his arsenal uh, to talk to us about as well. So, but let's just uh, go jump right into the news. And speaking of. Uh, the event, the Apple is aiming for September 7th to unveil the iPhone 14 and Apple Watch Series 8. Uh, Apple is reportedly planning to hold on, uh, its event uh, for both those devices uh, on uh, September 7th. This was according to Mark Gurman from Bloomberg, and he's a pretty pretty substantial rumor rumor guy out there, so I think it's, we're pretty confident this is what the date's going to be. Yeah, they're they're saying that the September iPhone event will kick off with a very busy fall product season. Expect uh, by the end of the year we'll have iPhone 14 and the Pro models, probably more Macs, uh, some new updated iPads, and and they say a trio of Apple Watches. Um, so they're going to stream the event and it's going to be uh, recorded, which I think has been working out great. So I'm happy mm-hmm. uh, that they'll they'll continue to do that. So uh, uh, Dan, what do you think? I think you, are, you, are you excited about the coming of getting a new iPhone 14? Uh, yeah, because I'm a camera hobbyist, yeah. camera nut, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I I read through Mark's article, uh, 42 megapixel camera. So, you know, the, the iPhone doesn't have a good zoom. Well, if I make it more megapixel, and I know it's not all about the megapixel. I've read yeah. plenty on that, too. But if, right. you know, being the Apple, I'm sure it'll be good. So maybe we'll finally get our, our, a decent zoom out of it. That's really all it's missing. So, yes, I'm very excited about well, that. I I, I, up, uh, I upgrade every year, and so does Warren. And Jeff, I know you're probably holding back a little bit, but uh, you got to be a little excited about the new products. You're holding well, back I'm deciding. Okay, I I am holding back my excitement until I see what's announced. And of course I'll be excited when it's announced. <laughs> right. We all are. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. And I skipped the 13. Uh, it was timing because I, I had to replace my iPhone. So I got a 12 and, you know, then a couple months later, the 13 comes out and I'm like two months, three months in, I am not replacing this, <laughs> but you know, now the 14 is just around the corner. You, you earned it by skipping a year. Yeah, look, yeah. That's right. Thank well, you, Mr. Enabler. <laughs> no, no. You're, you're That's right. I, would be, I would be like, this would be Christmas day for me if I was two, two generations behind. Um, yeah. So I learned a lot from last time speaking that I um, didn't buy that many cases for my current 13. I think only, the case Two or three. freak you are. <laughs> well, you know, because we know that it's not going to fit, you know, or, or it's kind of almost fit. And I'm going to, you know, get new cases. And, you know, if you look at the uh, slick deals and all that cases, you could get a nice 13 leather case for about half of what it used to be. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it. So I learned my lesson with that. Um, and, um, you know, put, I'm going to put it up on, uh, the offer sites um, probably about a week before that because you know even if you don't end up doing it 
there's no obligation. And if you do it before the announcement, you get more money um, after and yeah, the quote's good for 30 days. So that's what I've been doing uh, with, with that. Um, yeah. And I don't know. Last year I said I wasn't going to get the, uh, the watch and I held yeah. off for a month, I guess. You and me both. Well, <laughs> you know, you know, you know what they do, right? Like when, yeah. they, when that happened, the watch was hard to get. Right. And, you know, with COVID and things like that. And I think there was a break in like COVID where we were able to go into the stores or go to the front of the stores, at least. And I was in one of the malls and I said, oh, you don't, you don't have to watch, right? The seven. He's like, well, we happen to have this one. And it was the exact one I would have gotten. So of course, you know, yep. there it is. Yeah, Apple's so, good. I got you. So yeah, that's what you they, they make you think that, you know, this, you know, this is my lucky day. And if I don't get it now, it's not going to ever happen. So, um, so, uh, you know, uh, I've given into what's going to happen. I used to pretend I'm not going to get the new stuff, and right. uh, I don't even, yeah. I don't even pretend I am, anymore. I am looking forward. This is two generations, and oh, uh, the horror. Um, I, if the rumors are right, with the larger for the active people, I'm not active, but my no, eyes. Not. I'm 57 <laughs> years old. Yeah. I need yeah. the readers. Yeah. I want a bigger watch yeah. to, to be able Seven to read was it. Big, so. Um, yeah. We'll see. We got a lot, lot, uh, lot to wait for here in a few weeks. So let's hope they we get the final announcement. I would I would anticipate next week that Apple will, will send out the, f- the invitations. So before we go to the next story, real fast, Jeff, would you be interested in an iPhone 13 and an Apple Watch 7 in two weeks? Uh which Talk size things. Apple Watch? It's a it's forty four green. Oh, he likes the smaller mm-hmm. one. I, I do like the smaller one, but you know, we may end up talking. Let's talk. <laughs> I, I usually put it, you know, well, I first come first here. serves, I'll put a hold on it. And <laughs> and I give a discount to blonde hair people. So <laughs> you know, it's just my lucky day. Oh my god, I'm moving on here. <laughs> uh next story. Apple will we will start collecting net quote unquote Netflix tax in September. Apple will begin collecting taxes on Apple TV Plus sub- subscriptions within Chicago as part of its uh, settlement with uh, with the city um, relating to the uh, city's 2015 amusement tax. This is so ridiculous. In in July, Apple gave up its four year fight. It was four years they fought this. This was 2015. A so called Netflix tax that the the tax requires the tech giant to pay nine percent on streaming service income earned by from Chicago subscribers. According to Bloomberg Law, the Apple has agreed to collect the tax starting on September 15th from customers. And it's in Chicago, so I'm okay because I live in the suburbs, so I'm safe. So I don't have to pay it. So, uh, But uh, as part of the assignment, Apple will not have to pay any back taxes. Okay. So, yeah, at Chicago introduced this back in 2015, an amusement tax, which is absolutely ridiculous. This city just taxes everything. What do you think about this, Jeff? What the hell? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't live here. I, okay. yeah, it's <laughs> it's a fun tax is really what it is. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of it until you said that. No. Where you're having fun. We will tax you for having fun. Yeah. Um, That's not a did good the thing. Beatles write a song about this? The tax man. Um, yeah. Okay. I appreciate that uh, governments need revenue to operate. So we have to have taxes. But come on. I mean, so, may I ask a, a dumb question? So, does this mean that people in Chicago are going to have to now start paying nine percent more? It's going to be an addition, like it's. No, Apple has to pay this tax, and if they want to, so they want to. Yeah, so cut, it'll, get, it passed it on it'll get passed revenue? on by. Yeah, they'll lose that nine percent. I mean, we're talking about five dollars okay, a month. So, so it's so. not. It's not necessarily that the customer is going to pay for it. It's going to be well, Apple. They will it rolls down. Oh, right, right, my right. guess is that they Chicago will. residents will see an increase in their um, uh, in what they're paying because, uh, you know, I mean, you pay like five. What is it? Five dollars, six dollars a month right. for Apple right. TV Plus, And then whatever taxes are on top of that. Well, and nine percent is not a small percentage in there. You know, it, it seems like a lot. But oh, anyway, well, yeah, I, I, paying, I never heard of such we're paying 10 yeah, percent sales tax. So, I mean, it's. Uh, it, it's it's not not a great place. If you got Chicago, you got the suburbs, which I live in. That's not going to be affected by this tax. But uh, I'm waiting for Cook County, which I do live in, uh, that might might go next, and that's the county that Chicago is in. So who knows? It, it 
you know, mm-hmm. Apple did did uh, file a lawsuit against the city. They were arguing that the tax um, violated the Federal Internet T- Tax Freedom Act and the U.S. Constitution's com- commerce and due process laws. The 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 the, uh, the case hung for over two years, and then the judge basically just said no, he dismissed it. So, mm-hmm. go figure. And, and but uh, but that uh, Apple's not alone. Netflix and all the other streaming services have to have to pay that right nine percent as well. Right. So. Right. All right, let's uh, move on here. Uh, NASA is sending an iPad around the moon to help test Alexa in space. Uh, this this is a story that came out a week ago, but I thought it was interesting to save for this week. Uh, NASA is about to launch its new mega moon rocket called Space Launch System. As it turns out, important cargo from Apple will be involved. SLS is sending an uncrewed spacecraft uh, called Orion uh, uh, to the moon on a lengthy mission called Artemis One. Mission's primary goal is to demonstrate that the new rocket and spacecraft are capable of sending astronauts to the moon on future missions. However, a lesser known NASA objective includes using an iPad to assist in testing Amazon's A Lady <laughs> voice on Orion. I went, okay, well, what's wrong with this? Why would I want to test Amazon's Echo with an iPad? That just that makes no sense to me. Uh, so and it goes it through. Made, it made sense when we talked about it. Then. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I get why they're doing it now. Thanks, dude. <laughs> That's why I didn't say a lady. I just said a lady. So what, I don't what, know. Go ahead, Warren. What do you think? Just real fast is when we talked about the the iPad. From what I understand, is there to give the a lady the commands. So it's basically they're going to have a program that's going to say say this to it, say that to it, and it's going to speak it out. Mm -hmm. So that's the extent of what they're doing with it. And it makes sense because the iPad probably is fairly, you know, well-made. But yeah, I I actually think they're shooting the next season of uh, Mankind on it. So when they're shooting it out, they're just going to hit the record button and then uh, shoot the next season. There you go. (laughs) What do you think, Dan? I think this is crazy, but what what do I know? (laughs) Well, you know, I, I, yeah, I read it and I mean, I saw the headline for it before you sent this and I didn't really pay too much attention to it. It's interesting what they're trying to do. I'll go with that. You know, they want to make sure that, and I love the whole idea of space and, um, you know, they have to test everything. Is, yeah. is voice activation going to work? That's their whole goal is, you know, empty the trash or whatever. And they need to make sure it works. But yeah, I'm with you. Like, then why don't they just have, well, I guess the iPad is, uh, well, and they have a, a fire tablet that, you know, or do, do they still make fire they tablets? Do. They you know, do, but they, um, they're garbage. It's just weird that they're going. They with won't the survive Alexa. the launch. <laughs> That's yeah. right. They'll probably disintegrate by the time it got there. This is a great right. launch. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. The iPad may be more durable, but the Alexa, of course, I don't. You know, I'm not a huge fan of Siri either. I don't use uh, mm-hmm. voice command. I just haven't mastered it personally. Okay. Um, so I I don't have a good good luck with either one of them. We have Alexa here, and she keeps telling me that she's not connected to the internet. We connect her back up and. Then about a month later, she's not connected to the internet again. Mm. Yeah, it's just like ah. Yep. So Jeff, I know has to it was it was interesting, but I don't really have much to say. It'll be just, yeah. <laughs> I, I love the idea behind why they are doing it. I got a test. And I know Jeff has thoughts. <laughs> I always have thoughts. <laughs> um okay, so the idea that uh that we may see more uh commercial uh devices added in to uh, to space missions is kind of interesting because there are a lot of products that are being developed that have potential use off planet so doing things like this to see how these systems function in a in in an off planet environment and e- even if it doesn't work out, it's still really interesting to see what comes out of this. I get why they're using the A lady for it because they can actually send a self-contained system on uh, on the Orion spacecraft. And uh, mm-hmm. and I think it's funny though that to be able to remotely interact with it, that they couldn't use uh, uh, an Amazon product an a lady based product to make that happen yeah. they had to turn to an ipad so they could like automate parts of it and then remote into the ipad and use it as the go-between for talking to uh to the a lady interface yeah 
Do you think that they're actually going to be working with Amazon on like a custom code for Alexa? I know Apple probably wouldn't do that. And maybe that's why they're going with Alexa. Um, well, I mean, does Alexa work with third parties and custom development? Oh, oh yeah. Amazon, right. Amazon yeah. works with, uh, with, uh, third parties all the time and right. they have a very open, uh, platform for developers right. to create the, the plugins, the apps. So that, that probably, that's daily. probably why they're going with Alexa right there is that they can customize it. And, you know. I'm sure that's a big part of it. Also, there's no way that Apple could create a completely self-contained uh, S lady environment that's uh, that they could put on the spacecraft. But mm -hmm. Amazon, because of the way the uh, the whole Echo and A lady platform works, they they were able to create this whole custom uh, system, a self-contained A lady that they could just uh, mount in the uh, in the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which actually tells me that Apple is in a bad place to offer voice control uh, off planet in the future, unless every place that they're going to be, they're able to set up a uh, a redundant uh, uh, computer network that can handle locally uh, yeah. all, all of the commands. I think which, Apple should, should concentrate on Earth for a little bit more. I think yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apple needs to concentrate on Earth. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and Amazon clearly has the resources to be able to bundle up their A-Lady platform mm -hmm. and uh, and blow it out into space. Well, speaking about coming back to Earth, the next story is your iPhone may soon <laughs> have more ads, uh, potentially right. coming to maps, po podcasts, and books. Apple could eventually bring ads to more of its apps that come pre-installed on your iPhone and other Apple devices, including maps, books, podcasts. According to a report from Mark Gurman, uh, Apple has internally tested search ads in maps, which could display recommendations when you search for restaurants, stores, or other nearby businesses. Uh, Apple already implements a similar advertising model on the App Store, as we've talked about plenty of times and complained as developers uh, can pay to have their apps promoted or a search page or a query like a puzzle game or photo editor. Uh, Gurman believes that the Apple, that Apple uh, could introduce ads to its native podcasts and books apps as well. This could potentially allow publishers to place ads in areas within each app or pay to get their content placed at higher search results, blah, 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 more ads for something we already pay for. Right. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, I'm tired too. Um, the, okay, I'm talking about them. The the problem that I'm having with this is that we've already seen how ad placement works in the App Store, right? And for the average consumer, it's actually kind of confusing because there, in many cases, people are interpreting the ads they're seeing as the actual search result they were looking for. So this. I believe will be more of the same. So you'll you'll search for books and whatever ads are going to show up first. And you might assume this other book with a similar name is what you're looking for. It's going to be a, a real problem for podcasters. Yeah. I, I think discoverability is now going to be a thing where if you're not willing to pay up, you don't have a very high likelihood of being discovered. Yeah. No, agree. What do you think, Dan? I I I agree. Um you know, I, I can actually t talk on both sides. I have a couple of books in the bookstore and discoverability in the bookstore is horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I would like the opportunity to advertise it. But I also don't I, I agree that you have to, you have to be very delicate with that. You don't want to turn into the Google and where everything is, you know, the first fold on the front page is all ads. And you go to the app store, exactly like Jeff's talking. Um, people don't know that that blue color tint means that it's an ad and it takes up practically the whole the whole iphone screen you know kind of thing you have to swipe up so you have to be very 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 careful unfortunately i do believe that you know i i agree with mark this is the way it's going to go um you know on a side note i read years ago that uh, google with their self-driving cars have they have figured out where they can make these taxi services for free because they are going to know where you're going and then they can yeah. sell you ads yeah. And people will pay for that and the advertisers will pay for your ride. So everything's, you know, it's ads are uh, yeah. not a bad thing. Oh, it's a free ride. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. Not, but ads, you know, ads. Yeah, it's, 
<laughs> yeah, you Sometimes you just want to pay for something. You know what? You know? For that, you get in there, you put on headphones, and, and you, you don't watch whatever they're trying to show. <laughs> I mean, yeah, come on, but okay. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's a it's a slippery slope. But on the on the flip side, I do think there it would be nice because uh, things can get lost. You know, when I was developing apps, the way that I um, put it, I came out. I was at the in the app store when it first came out, and I felt like I was in a little boutique thing, like in the middle of a of a mall. You know how you have the little yeah. little shops in the middle of the aisle. Yeah. So there's. 50 products, you're going to have strong sales. Right now, you know, you are in a super duper Walmart, Target, whatever combination, Amazon warehouse, and your product is completely lost. Yeah, it's and their search, you know, I wish they would put efforts into their search, but that's a whole other topic. Yeah. I'm yeah. with you on that, Dan. I agree. Any other thoughts, Warren, before we move on? My thoughts are always the same. You know, as are necessary, people need ads the companies need ads uh and advertising companies need ads and you know would a world without them would be good sure i guess but then how would you find anything and you know mm-hmm. how would you know what to buy um you know apple dug themselves into a bit of a hole because they made such a big deal about you know ads and you know we don't blow things up and this is like our closed garden and you know this isn't even a privacy thing because it's not this is an ad thing, you know, we could talk about the privacy aspect too, but mm-hmm. um, they made such a big deal about, you know, um, no ads in our stuff. So now, you know, they, they, they're they trying to, you know, put them in there because there's reasons, right? They're not just saying, let's add, let's do it. They're doing that. Somebody's making money off it or they need the money or something, and, you know, something's going on. And, you know, so they're in a position where, Everybody's like, ha ha, we told you so. And you're, you're not as shiny as you, you know, everybody thinks you are kind of thing. So, yeah. and as Apple fans, we're like, it's not that we care about the ads so much, but we care more about all the Apple haters pretending that they're right, that, that this is happening. So, and you know, yeah, I, and we are, and I, I am too. I would be too. So. Yeah. Um, uh, next story was uh, about podcasts. We were talk. We just mentioned that briefly. Uh, Apple added new charts uh, to podcast tracking, subscription shows, and channels. Uh, Apple has added two new charts to the Apple Podcasts platform uh, that track both the subscription-based podcasts and the subscription podcast channels. Top subscriber shows and top subscriber channels are now available to the users in the U.S., U.K., Canada, Australia, who are running iOS 15.6 or uh, or Mac an iPad 15.6 or Mac 12.5 or, or later. Uh, top uh, sh- uh, charts will list uh, the, the 100 top subscription-based podcasts on the platform. Uh, and there's a lot of them starting to add to the, to the subscription. I was kind of skeptical when Apple first launched this back in June of 2021, uh, but it seems to be growing some traction. Um, uh, what do you think, Dan? Um, I don't listen to too many podcasts. And and all honesty, I don't use Apple Podcasts. I use Marco's um you know, overcast. Uh, yep. For, for it. Yep. Um, so I don't pay too much attention to that. And I don't pay too much attention to the charts either. So I, I, yeah. I don't really have a strong opinion on this, but I did find it interesting. Like you said, you know, they're starting to gain traction. I was wondering where they were going with the subscriptions right. and all that. And if right. it was catching on and, Seems to. um, you know, this is all adds to it. So that is, that part alone is interesting, you know, and, and the whole yeah. scheme of things. What do you think, Warren? No thoughts, really. You know, you guys are podcasters. I'll leave it up to you to, to worry about that stuff. <laughs> All right, Jeff. <laughs> Go ahead. Let us know what you think. You, uh, you have thoughts, Jeff. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when Apple announced the, the uh, subscription thing, because they made it something that was easily accessible to all podcasters, I figured unless they really screwed this up bad, it, it would eventually gain traction. Yeah. And my guess is that the the charts, they've been looking at these same charts internally since uh, they, they rolled out the feature. But you don't want the charts available to the public unless you have a lot of data in them. Mm-hmm. So wait about a year and then introduce the charts as something everyone can see. And now there's all this, this data there. And, yeah. uh, and of course, that means there's a bunch of shows that are using subscriptions so they can actually show you the, the, the top shows. And it's not just like 
there are three shows that are that are doing subscriptions. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. That's good thoughts there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Definitely. I agree. Um, next story, uh, short one here. Uh, Apple tends to do a lot of these things for fitness. Uh, you can celebrate uh, national parks with Apple's latest activity challenge, which is going to be on August 27th. It'll be a couple uh, about, about less than a week from now as we record this. Uh, Apple will, will commemorate national parks in the U.S. with its annual Apple Watch Activity Challenge. Uh, the 2022 National Parks Challenge will ask users to complete a hike, a walk, a run, or a wheelchair workout of at least a mile on that Saturday. Uh, and, you know, Apple says they want to celebrate the beauty of national parks everywhere. Uh, on August 27th, earning this award will record this. Uh, and uh, it gets to your, to your health app, and it makes it fun. So, uh, Dan, you were talking about the wanting to do more stuff with your watch. What do you think of yep. Apple doing this stuff? I think it's cool, and I haven't done paid too much attention to it in the last couple of years. I don't get into the gamifying kind of thing, but I when it, when they first introduced it, I was like, I get I have to get these badges. I don't even know where to find them on in the watch app anymore. You know, yeah. um, so I don't pay too much attention. And then, but obviously, there's a market out there for, it, and I think it's good. When I was paying attention to it, it did it got me out. Yeah, and um, you know, it also brings awareness to the national parks, which is awesome. You know, we live. I when people think of national parks, you think of Colorado, California, not realizing here I am in Michigan, and and we have national parks here in Michigan as well. So mm-hmm. maybe it gets people. To to go out and explore those so it's good it's good awareness yep mm-hmm. jeff, jeff you mentioned colorado there's plenty uh, you explore a lot of those areas uh, what do you think yeah we we have i'm not sure how many at least six national parks in colorado and rocky mountain national park is actually pretty close to me so the idea of zipping up to rocky mountain national park and maybe doing a hike around bear lake or shoot on up to chasm lake or something like that um it sounds awesome the reality is that uh, the park system is so overloaded right now yeah. that I'm not going to be able to get a reservation to get into the park to actually yeah, get a badge. Especially this, this is probably generating more interest. Warren, any thoughts on this? Um, I, I will celebrate the people who will do this challenge. Um, Cause that won't be me probably. <laughs> Um, my watch, you know, when I stand up, sometimes it says you did it, you stood up and that's, that's good. That's my badge. And it makes me feel good. So that's about as far I'm going with this, uh, <laughs> challenge. Right. Um, I, I, like Dan, I have no idea where it would even tell me I got some kind of badge, but it does, you know, once in a while I'll go on vacation and we'll walk around a lot. And my watch tells me like, is this really you? And I'll say, yeah, it's still me. Uh, I've been, and then you know, it asks if you want to sit down. It asks you, well, should, you, you haven't sat. To, should, I, should I call nine one one? Have yeah. you gone? You know, yeah. Um, when, when you move too much. Yeah. Uh, couple more stories here, real quick. Uh, the Garage Band adds new Katy Perry and Seventeen remix sessions. Apple Music app Garage Band for iOS and iPad OS has gained new DJ sessions based around Katy Perry and K-pop group uh, Seventeen. Apple's pre- previously updated uh, the GarageBand to include sound packs from the likes of Lady Gaga. Now, two free downloads for the app have been released to provide users the ability to learn how to mix two songs. Uh, oh. I don't know if I necessarily would do this. I mean, I, I'll, I'll say I'd use GarageBand on the Mac to edit this podcast, but I don't do a lot of music editing. But I think uh, <laughs> don't don't you dare Somebody play that keyboard. Uh, so uh, so I don't know how exciting this is. Uh, what do you think, Warren? Since you uh, you you got the music uh, equipment there, um, I got it. It's awesome. Um, first of all, I don't. I play with these packs, um, and I don't actually understand them. You know, GarageBand gives you uh, um, downloads for sounds and and yeah. tones and things like that, but these are more like. I, I think I did a Lady Gaga one, and it confused me. I got rid of it. Um, but um, yeah, no, I I I love my I use GarageBand. Um, I tried Logic Pro for a while. Um, I'm I'm using Ableton Live right now, which mm, is a, it's go. a good one, and it sounds great. I'll play stuff. Later. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh, What do you think, Jeff? 
Uh, I'm personally waiting for the the Warren remix download pack. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, will, it will just be me saying yeah. underpants, yeah. underpants, <laughs> underpants, <laughs> underpants. It's going to be epic. Epic. Um, yeah, I I'm not the market for this. Now yeah. I do use GarageBand some. Yeah. Uh, and I used to use it a lot more, but right. uh, for for people that are into doing the remix stuff. This is great. And GarageBand's actually a really great tool for that. And uh, and considering Apple is clearly trying to position their products as the tools that that you should be using as a, as a content creator, social media content creator, TikTok, for example, doing stuff like this is really smart. You yeah. need to cater to that to that uh, uh, content creator market. And you need to keep them engaged if you want them to use your products. Agree. And Quick question: Is content is is that the same as a professional? These content creators and like who are you catering to? Content creators. Um, Would you put it, them in the same? It covers or? it covers a wide range of people. From you know from people that that are doing it casually to mm-hmm. people where that's actually their career, where they're making right. uh, TikTok videos mm-hmm. as a career. Yep. Right. So like when, you know, when people say Apple doesn't cater to the pros anymore and now they are, but when they were saying that, you know, is a pro, you know, a pro could be a con, you know, you could be a professional at editing content and creating as a hobby and get nothing for it. Or you could be, do that for Lucasfilms and get a million dollars a year. So, I mean, it's just, you know, with the, with this new group of content creators, I'm just wondering how Apple is going to, push in that direction because they got their pros and then they got their non-pros. Well, a good thing would be like Final Cut Pro. I don't think a lot of Hollywood uses it like they used to, but a lot of YouTubers use it. So I think it's transitioned from a pro like Hollywood Pro to the new pros, the content creators. Right. Well, the price is not, you know, the price isn't what it used to be. I think it's actually Final Cut and the other one, uh, ProLogic, I think, have come down in price from where they were initially. It used to be, mm-hmm. it used to be one of the big expensive packages. Right. But I think nowadays it's not. You know, I think Hollywood's got better stuff than than that. Right. And their mark, I think Apple is pushing <laughs> it to a different market now. So it's like you almost got like you know you, you had the Garage Band for the, the the normal users, and you had um, Logic Pro for the professional. Was it Logic Pro? Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. or, mm-hmm. it, for the professionals, and then. There was nothing else, but now you're seeing this content creator kind of, kind of pushing into the middle where the pro line is not going to, mm-hmm. it's almost like they push these pro products into a different area of people. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Their market is, yeah, that's what I say is the market is changing. Yeah, so, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, one last story real quick here. Uh, Apple Card is ranked top for customer satisfaction by J.D. Power for a second year. Apple announced today that for the second year row, the Apple Card and its issue of Goldman Sachs ranked highest in mid-sized credit card issue in, in, the, uh, in the category for the J.D. Power's annual U.S. credit card satisfaction study. And uh, yeah, the announcement just comes a week after they were being reported to the U.S. Com- uh, Consumer Finance Protection Bill for investigating uh, Goldman Sachs over various customer service issues, including complaints on handling disputed transactions. So I guess... This kind of was a little bit redundant, but apparently they're doing really well. I'm, I've been very happy with my Apple card. Uh, uh, Dan, do you have an Apple card? Do you use the Apple? I do. And, you know, the, compared to my other credit cards, I love how you pay for it. And, yeah. you know, the, the whole interface with the app, I, it is, it, it's the card I prefer to use. Yeah. And it's the card that my wife prefers to use. It's the card that my brother prefers to use. Yeah. And I think half of it is outside of the rewards. I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to, to pay off and, yep. you know. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. I think they've done a fantastic, and letting you know what the interest charges are, all that right stuff. Right off the bat. I love that. Uh, what do you think, Warren? Uh, yeah, I have one that I use for Apple purchases pretty much only. Um, few interactions I have with them were, well, I had one bad experience with them that I think about it. I had a f- mostly good, but the one I had was, if, and it was basically if you buy something on Apple Card, you get the cash back things happen and then you return that item after you got the cash back um 
there was a issue with getting because now they're they owe you money somehow, right? Was, I'm trying to think how it happened, but it was stuck in it was stuck in my Apple Cash, and I was trying to put it back from the card. I was trying to move it from the card to my Apple Cash, where the refunds go, and it was it wasn't easy. But I think I had to contact somebody hard over there. But for the most part, you just text them and they text you back, and yep. you know it's pretty good. good. Jeff, you thought thoughts? Uh, I'm actually not surprised that Apple Card has a a, a top customer satisfaction rating. Uh, Dan, like you were saying, I mean, it's just so easy. the The mm-hmm. whole interface in the in the wallets app is great. And Warren, like you, my Apple Card is for Apple purchases, and and then I have an Amazon card, and that's for all the Amazon purchases. And it just drives me crazy that. Instead of having, <clears throat> excuse me, a a branded, well thought out interface for the for my Amazon credit card, I have to download the Chase app because mm-hmm. that's or sit, yeah, I guess it's Chase yeah. for that one, and uh, and I do everything through Chase, even though it's an Amazon branded credit card. Right. Mm-hmm. Amazon should have followed Apple's lead in this and then revamped their whole interface for their credit card. So you're using an Amazon branded thing for it. Right. And then it's easier or that set up easier to understand and use. Um, yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Everyone needs to, to, to rip off Apple uh, yeah. um, for, yeah. for managing your credit card interface. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, let's move on. I got to ask the news for this week. A uh, couple stories before we talk about beta here. Uh, Apple did release iOS 15.6.1 and iPad OS 15.6.1 with bug fixes. Um, there were minor updates uh, to the operating system, uh, and uh, you know they they uh, go through and say that if there's a dot one release, there must be some reason why. So it, they didn't necessarily say there was a zero exploit, but I think there was. And oh, you and oh I, no, they they explicitly th- said they did it. Okay, there were two zero day exploits. Okay, so then that they, must that they were where we're being. Um, um, or that were active in the wild. Okay. Yeah. You and I both posted that this is a must install, and I agree. Uh, so, so Jeff, what do you think on this? Yeah, it's, this is something, go out, do it now, to get it installed. Mm hmm. Yeah, most important. All, Hop to it. All, all of us here, it's always say if it's if it's a dot one release, there's got to be a reason why they released it. So, especially this, mm-hmm. this cl- close into iOS 16 coming out here, uh, the next month or so. So, uh, don't go out and keep your device protected. Although I did. Uh, I had a friend call me today. He updated to the to the latest one, the dot one, mm-hmm. and he had to do a restart on his phone. Not to scare anyone that's watching. Really, do the updates. Really? But I was like, really? That's what I it was like. Really? It's, you don't? I don't yeah, run into that at surprising. all anymore. But yeah. he's one of these people that if something's going to happen, you know, you all have those friends. If who knows what he yeah. did? I I don't know. But yeah. Um. Yeah. So go out, do it iPad, iPhone, right. take care of it. Um, there was a bit of confusion on the, uh, the part of Mac Mac rumors. They originally said that Watch OS 8.7.1 was released as another minor update to the Watch uh, OS, uh, but this was only for the Watch uh, Series 3. Um, so there, you will see an update if you have a Series 3 Apple Watch uh, to the 8, 8.7.1, but everybody else will still stay on 8.7, so there should be any worries about that? I think the general audience is going to be the, the other models. So, but uh, be aware of that. If you have an Apple Watch Series Three, uh, uh, please uh, get that updated as well. Uh, beta uh, w- this week, uh, beta six of uh, of uh, I- uh, iOS and iPad OS and all the others was released this past week. And Warren, you being the beta guy, you notice any changes this week and uh, on on, uh, on the updates that you help with. Well, my my first question is: Am I protected against a zero day bug with my beta phone? Mm. I mean, that's I, a really good question. That's a good question. Yeah, mm-hmm. because the beta dropped a little bit before that news came out that it was even in, that found. So I don't I, know. I, I'm assuming that uh, on our beta devices that we actually are not protected. Oh, uh, so if I was a, a hacker and knew that, that's not good. Yeah. Anyhow, um, but I'm sure they'll come out with one soon. Uh, the only thing I noticed really is I had the uh, um, I had the Amex bug that was reported today, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't know if you saw that. Uh, I heard about uh, it. I think, yeah. So the day I after the day I did my beta, my wife told me she had some weird 
problem with her credit card. And all of a sudden, my I got an email saying your, your Amex was deactivated from your Apple wallet. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's something that my wife did. And I'm like, now I'm confused. So then I look at my phone and sure enough, my uh, it removed my Amex card. And then the message is scary. Like, you know, like, you know, did somebody steal my card or something? You know, you don't know what's going on. So then I went and just tried to re-add it back and add it back. I'm like, okay, well, if it's adding back, then I guess it's okay. And I do it, did it two other times and it drops it from the watch too. Um, so I spent, a, you know, a good and, and like, it, it's not a one-time thing. So I spent a good amount of time trying to fix that because I was actually going shopping that day and that was a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, nothing, uh, pretty much the same as last. Well, there's always that, that big controversy about uh, the battery percentage icon. and it, Oh, stupid controversy. <laughs> so, so we, we talked um, about it last week. It was just like, just please stop. People. Stop. It's just nothing. It's, you know, you know what? Don't don't even look at it. If it bothers you. It's, it's really nothing. And actually, I like it. Yeah, I, I, like, I like it too. I, I, I haven't seen yeah. it yet because I have a only beta device I have an iPhone is the 10R, which is not included for yeah. some reason. They don't have it. Yeah, yeah I know. So. so um, I mean, it's it's exactly you know it's that little thing on top and yeah, it's got the nice big number on it. And Dan, Dan, do you dabble in any beta at all, or do you just do wait? Myself, yes. Oh yeah, no, I'm on beta everything. Okay, I mean, so you're just like Ward. All right, you and Ward are I gave a, together. I gave a class on contacts and calendar earlier, just before this meeting, as I mentioned, and uh, I was talking about how you can create groups, and I'm like, ooh. Okay. Well, this is coming in iPad OS 16 and iOS. I mean, I had to show it because there it was. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you can create groups of contacts. Oh, I'm all in. So you are brave. I can put it on my watch. <laughs> you know. See, and we survived. Look, Jeff and Dave, we're still here. Hey, I, I yeah. run uh, beta on my sacrificial devices. So I, I actually have an iPad Pro sitting right here. Two of them I have. That's running developer beta. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah. it's, Spare devices it's only. running just fine. Anyone using add, Stage Manager? Yeah, I have it on one laptop. I have it on one uh, This iPad together. doesn't support Stage Manager. Okay. I, on my Macs. I have a mini. I do it on the Mac. So. Um, yeah, no, I, I was doing that for a while where I was putting beta on secondary devices, but I found that I didn't spend any time really using it because I wasn't, you know, you have to purposely use a secondary device to, to use it. And I found it. I put it on my main devices, then I have to use it. I have to see it. And, you know. Yeah. It gave me more exposure. Absolutely. So, um, well, the it's it's getting close. Uh, there would be about a month away. This September It's probably when iOS uh, 16 will be out. Uh, iPad OS, from what we've heard, is going to be a bit of a delay. So, uh, it's definitely uh, going to be a little later for iOS, iPad OS. So, um, mm-hmm. next topic here. I, I thought this was interesting because the fact of you know the Air Air Tag. We've talked about Air Tag number of times here on the show. Air Tags have been pretty popular with Apple. Um, I've got a number of them. Um, it's been released, uh, but it's been a little over a year since it come out. It's came out, and um, you kind of had to expect. I guess the batteries were going to start running out soon. I don't know if a lot of people have complained. I haven't seen too much uh, in, in the news media that it's been uh, that it wasn't dead. But I have Why would have people complain about that. Yeah, just change the damn battery. I mean, <laughs> right? Uh, so it. Uh, I was. I didn't expect it. I have an answer. I have an answer for you, Jeff. I, I I have no doubt. <laughs> okay. So the, the, the fast answer is my mom's battery and the one air tag I gave her started going about four months ago, five months ago. Mm-hmm. And I gave her the air tag with one of those Belkin holders right. to put on her dog's car. Oh, oh okay. I see where the problem is right now. I see now. where this is going now, right? True. I see where this is going. So my mom called me in the complete panic, like, what's going on? How to? It took me three days to try to explain to her how to open up the Belkin thing and how to open up the Apple thing to get the battery out. Uh, it's, she still didn't do it right. She had to come up. So um, it's hard actually. Yeah. It's not the, but it's, the Belkin it's, case is the, is the biggest yeah, problem. That's the yes. problem. I, I, she kept, I that. kept saying, just turn it. Turn. She's like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm showing her, I'm showing her pictures from the internet. She's like, yeah. yeah. Well, I was, I was surprised. I mean, I have four of them. And out of the four, one of them, which I'd probably probably use the least. I mean, I've got two sets of keys that I have the, 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 them on, and then I have one just clipped inside my inside my backpack. 
uh, to, for tracking my backpack. That was the one that went out. So uh, I replaced all four. Does it give you a time. warning? It does. Through, like, through yeah. Find My, it's going to actually tell you that you'll, you'll start getting, you'll get a notification that the battery is okay. low. Because I have I have four as well, but yeah. they're all seem to be good so far. Yeah, so. no, the other yeah, three have been fine. So you could buy a four pack of this CR 232s or whatever. 2032, yeah. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, just buy a four pack of them and do it all at the same time. I, that's what I did. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's um, easy. Yeah, I I found that the AirTag that is with me most of the time. So that would be the right. the bag that I take with me when I when I go out to run errands and and I'm just generally away from my place. That's the tag that uh, that the battery died about three months ago. The okay. tag that's in my laptop bag, which hasn't had to go hardly anywhere right. for two years now, thanks pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, the The battery in that one is still going strong, mm. and uh, and then the other air tag that I have, same thing. It's here almost all the time, still going strong. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I did put a link in the show notes here for an uh, support article on how to. Uh, the, uh, it actually it has an animation to show you how to grab hold of the of, of the silver part of the air tag and you twist it to get it to open. I had a bit of a challenge getting it open. It's it's a little tricky. You got to get it's kind of a press down and twists to to get the battery out. But uh, it does seem uh, relatively easy to get the taken care of. And uh, like I said, the C, the, the CR two hundred three twos you can buy huge bundles of them on Amazon and and they're not that terribly expensive. So I bet uh, people bring them to the Apple store. To get them changed out. Yeah, hey, well, they'll, they'll do it for free. Why not? <laughs> um, so uh, I, I'm so glad, glad that Dan is here, and Dan's got such a great website and his his uh, his business as well, uh, danstutorials.com. And he was he was gracious enough to to uh, uh, do some a uh, couple tips on some of the things he's covered in the past on his site. Um, notably, I I, I, I pointed out uh, focus mode is probably one of the more underrated things that are used and i don't know if you've talked about that before dan as far as uh, as far as how to use it i don't utilize it as as much as i should but uh, i just wanted to hear some of your your tips that you've been giving out on on focus mode and how you use it uh well i i do use it every day um at the school so i help out at a local school about 10 to 12 hours a week uh -huh. and what i will do is when i go to the school um basically it's geo location. So as soon as I get to the school, it goes into that mode and uh, it will lock down notifications from uh, people that uh, that I don't. I can only receive notifications from people that I work with and from my wife, you know, kind of thing and, <laughs> and family, I think I have in there. Yeah. But outside of that, when I leave, it automatically turns off. Um, on the iPad, you can have it um, actually switch home screens. So if you have specific apps that you use, when I go to the school, that's what I did. We use a lot of Google apps. It will automatically switch over to my Google apps. And then when I leave, it goes back over to my other home screens on uh, on the iPad. If uh, if you don't mind, I can quickly show you, yeah. you know, yeah, absolutely. how that. Uh, so I'm in my iPad here and essentially now I'm using I I'm using the beta, but it should work the same. So I have to say that uh, but you just go to focus here. And you're going to see I have these different focuses. And what's really cool with iOS 16 that's coming out this fall, it will actually, you can actually change the screen. So you can visually see which, easily see which focus mode you're in. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, basically, I just go up here. What do I want to focus on? I'm just going to go with custom here. I put a color in there and a little text and uh, test. And here's where all the fun stuff comes. Basically, I choose who I want to receive notifications from. I wish I could have it the opposite. I was hoping that they would put it where I, I don't want to receive notifications from specific things, but it's, you know, it's flipped around. But basically, I just go in here and add who I want to receive notifications from. I go in here and select which apps I want to receive notifications from. Mm -hmm. Then I just go down. This is where I can customize my home screens. Which home screens do I want it to show? select which ones I can select more than one. And this is the fun one here is um, basically I add a schedule <clears throat> or smart activation. And with smart activation, it will use signals throughout the it kind of watches what you do. Or here's where I go with the app 
location and I would put in the school and boom, it just automatically switches. I do the same thing. I read at night. I have an iPad mini that I use for my reading. Um, and uh, automatically at 1130, I just have that one go by a schedule. And you can also have it go by an app. So when I open up the books app, what it will do is automatically go into focus mode. So then I won't receive any notifications or anything like that. I can just turn everything off on that. And the beauty is it syncs across all the different devices. So you can set it up on one and uh, go across on all the other ones. So it I think it's neat. It's, I think it's one of those things that people don't really realize what you can do with yeah. it. You have to spend a little time to set it up, but um, it, it does work pretty well. I, you know, it's uh, there's some ways that they could improve it, but I think it works pretty well. And I do use it on a regular basis. So great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, the other only other one I wanted you to, to talk about, because you just talked about this probably fresh in your mind here is the saving of PDFs from Safari uh, to the iPad. Yeah, this one actually came from one of my members. And okay. um, basically, when you're on the iPad here, uh, what what they were running into is when they go and download, you're going to see here a PDF. Um, and when I click on it, you normally what they wanted to do is they wanted to download it to the files app. So then they can save it, put it into a folder, things like that. So you click on this thinking it's a PDF. And it doesn't happen all the time. What happens here is this site, mm-hmm. this is a site that they sent me. What it does is it generates, I'm going to say it probably, it must be generating the PDF right now. So it's kind of misleading. You're not really opening up a PDF here. Mm -hmm. What you are doing is you're opening up something that it is creating. So then what they wanted to do, I don't know why it's taking so long here. That must be a really big PDF. Uh, Yeah, as I say. Let's try it again. Go back. We'll try this one. It's because it's beta. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did work on the beta. I recorded this lesson. But anyway, what basically what will happen here is it'll open up. And then to right. save it to the files app, what you would do is you would go to the share and you would add it to files. But if you look here, there's nothing there where you can save it to files. So they were like, how do I save this PDF? Right. As far as he was concerned, this is a PDF. Well, it wasn't. Basically, what he had to do is he had to this little button in the upper right hand corner that is just gray is a download button. And when you click on that, it would download it and it would convert it to a true PDF, which is right here. Now I'm looking at a real PDF. And being that it's a real PDF, I can save it to files. So it was a two step process. So it's a, it's a, you know, sometimes when you go to these sites, it's a little misleading. You think you're opening up a PDF when really you're not opening up a PDF. It is kind of, but not. You have to, when you download it, then it converts it to a true one and then you can go and save it in the files app. So great. Now, uh, and that, uh, those are two great tips that you offered this week. I really, we really appreciate it. Um, one other topic I wanted to hit, uh, real quick here. Um, this was an article I found in uh, Apple Insider. I thought this was an interesting topic in the fact that it's been seven years since Apple uh, was right to kill off the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Um, and it's, I guess, we're, we're more clear than ever the days of the headphone jack on mobile devices are numbered. I think more and more, uh, not, not just Apple, Samsung and all the, many of the other uh, phone manufacturers are, are, are stopping it as well. Um, it's been since the iPhone 7. We're at the iPhone 13. Um, so they slowly started removing the headphone jack uh, from 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 the device. Now you can get a dongle. We all love dongles, right? You're using the uh, the uh, Lightning to, to 3.5 millimeter uh, dongle that you plug into the Lightning uh, connector, and you can plug a, a wired headphone in if you so choose. Uh, we're all using wired uh, wireless. I'm using AirPods and, and others as well we do, but... Uh, I kind of wanted to hear your thoughts, so Dan. I'll start with you. What do you think? Do you think that the the, uh, the headphone jack is pretty much a thing of the past now? I don't. I just don't see it. I I do, and you know, I I, I listen to a lot of audio. I still go to live music. Um, mm-hmm. I got uh, three subwoofers in my little nice. twelve hundred square foot house. I mean, it's nice. uh, it's all Sonos, you know, kind of thing. I got the Sonos move. Um, not that I'm an audio file, but I I love audio. Um, but I was never really that uh, heartbroken when they got rid of the headphone jack um, because I, I, I have some nice Bluetooth headphones and they work great. But I understand that some people, the true audiophiles, they, you know, 
were a little upset with the leg and things like that. Yeah. But like you said, get the dongle then. So it, it never really bothered me too much. And uh, it, it made sense, especially with these, with, you know, the iPad Pros, how they have that battery case. Right. And you just pop them in there. So theoretically, your iPods, iPads, or whatever, um, they should uh, always be charged, you know, for the most part. Yeah. yeah, I agree. So it didn't bother me at all. What, do you, what about you, Jeff? What, do, 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 you, do you miss it at all? There was a headphone jack on the, on the iPhone at one point. <laughs> no, um, okay, so the, the thing for me was when, when you're using Bluetooth headphones, including AirPods, you're doing it for convenience, not for audio quality, yep. because mm-hmm. you're, you're getting a lot of uh, extra compression that goes through the, the, the uh, Bluetooth protocol. It's, you know, it's just a limitation. And, um, and Dan, you mentioned the audio files that went at the headphone jack. I think the audio files didn't care about the headphone jack because they were, if I mean, if they were really listening to high quality music off of their iPhone, they were using an external DAC right. that mm-hmm. plugged mm-hmm. into the lightning port. And mm-hmm. then they're using wired headphones with that, which is exactly what, what I have done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so the headphone jack on my iPhone, when I had one, its sole purpose was to have a way to plug a phone into the uh, the stereo in a car, hmm. and uh, and anyone that that says yeah, but I have this killer sound system in my car. <laughs> A car is not the venue for for quality sound. No. Um, I mean, yes, you can have great speakers, you you can have good sound, but yeah, that that's not uh, where an audiophile experiences their music. So you know, it didn't matter that I was limited to the onboard DAC in the phone yeah. um, and doing Bluetooth connection in cars. Now it doesn't matter that much because you're you're not getting you're not in the right place to really take advantage of that audio. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Have you, have you, I, uh, oh, go ahead, Warren. Yeah, no, I, I, I have a, a different opinion. Uh, I miss the headphone jack. And the reason is, is because since I've been playing with garage band and, and music programs, the, the way it works is through headphone jacks for the most part. And out of the Mac, I, I'm not going to show you, but out of the Mac and, you know, uh, iPad and all that stuff, you can't use Bluetooth to play music for a keyboard because there's a lag and it's bad yeah, lag. That's true. You can't do it. So the only thing that works is a wire connection in music production at all. So when I have, you know, a portable studio and I have my iPad mini, it doesn't have a headphone jack. So I got a dongle with the headphone jack. Right broke after like six months so i mean and i miss you know so it pisses me off i want to have one jack um why why the headphone jacks on uh macbook still if they're a thing of the past well and if you talk if you you know they talk about the thinness you know that was the main reason on the iphone they talk talk about it they'll say it on the macbook but we have to have the headphone jack because you know it's you know, professional music and blah, blah, blah. But they're trying to sell an iPad Pro as mm-hmm. the same kind of device. And there's no headphone jack. So, I mean, for music for music production, the headphone jack is a is a thing. I sure. would, yeah, I would say that on the iPhone probably doesn't need it. But I would, I that's a good argument. On the iPad, absolutely. They need to the, treat it as a, as a true professional. Right. Um, and there's definitely times on an iPhone where it would have been nice because you could get GarageBand on the iPhone. Yeah. I have, um, I had to get a Lightning to... Have a lightning to um to uh 3.5 adapter right uh which works but again you know you can't charge your phone at the same time it dies out so i mean it's yeah there's there's reasons still out there uh warren i'm with you on the ipad um so i do all my video editing on my ipad pro and yeah. so that means that either i'm just using the built-in speakers on the ipad uh which for the video parts are fine but if I need to pay close attention to the audio, yeah, then I'm plugging in a uh, USB-C to, to a three and a half millimeter adapter so I can do that. Um, on my Mac, yeah, I'm wired in right now. Um, so, but the thing is, a lot of people complain saying that they 
that they want the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. And what they really want is a three and a half millimeter headphone jack for input, which we haven't had on a Mac for several years. Right. That's true. Now they, hey, what software do you use, Jeff, for video editing? Sorry. I, no, it's Luma Fusion. That's what I, okay. That's what I have too. But they, they absolutely have, love it. They've, they've started to not include the headphone jack on the iPad or am I wrong? Have they, they still include on the, because I don't think the pro I'm looking at my M one here. I don't know. I don't recall the, uh, there's no headphone jack. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, the the uh, the pro? flat edge yeah. iPad Pros do not have a headphone jack on them. Yeah, that's what I was say. Yeah, so there is no headphone Which, jack. This is the, mine. Is the M1 the M1 uh, uh, iPad? It, it doesn't have headphone jack. So so here here's an interesting problem that I occasionally have. If I'm working with video on an external drive in LumaFusion on my iPad Pro, um. How do I have my external drive connected mm. and have my headphones at the same time? Exactly. <clears throat> and the answer is I have to use uh, a dock like I would with my Mac. And, uh, and so I'll have my iPad plugged into a dock if, if I'm doing that, which is kind of crazy. but Because mm-hmm. yeah. okay. the whole idea with the iPad is just take it with you. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so right. realistically, if I'm editing on my iPad on the go, then um, I know, well, actually I'm not taking the the external hard drive with me anyhow. So then it's not a a big deal, but it's a limitation. If I wanted to take the external drive and have my headphones connected at the same time, then I have to use uh, uh, an external dock. Gotcha. Yeah, I guess and I'll close it in saying, you know, I don't miss the iPhone jack at all. I mean, I got the dongle if I need it. Um, I'm fine with it. Um, I, I, I too, because uh, Jeff, you've talked me into getting the uh, 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 a DAC and and uh, the, uh, the the one you have, I believe, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Are, are you? Oh, um, crap. Well, I have multiples, so I'm trying to think of which one. I, I probably talked you into the D1. The D1, right. From Audio Engine. Audio Engine, right. So I've got it sitting nicely on top of my dock here and plugged right into my Mac. Uh, and I got, you know, you know, I've got the road, the road headphones, and I got uh, 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 those are really great sounding. And for for here, it's great. Um, and you, you mentioned Sonos, uh, Dan. I've got the Sonos Move mm-hmm. speaker, which is awesome. Uh, I've got mm-hmm. iPad, uh, the HomePod sitting above me here. So I'm 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 into the music too, but. Again, yeah, there there you go with the delay of music too. Sometimes you watch it if mm-hmm. you're going to watch a YouTube video uh, and play them through your HomePod th- that I have in pair up here, it's going to have a del- it's going to have a bit of a lag. Right. So, uh, so yeah. I think that's really what people have to think about is the fact that the, that a headphone jack is yeah, it's just not as important on a on a mobile type device anymore. I mean, the Mac still has it because it's got the space, and I think you know for the reasonings that you need to be able to still have a place to, to plug in if, if necessary. So, um, so that was a great topic. Glad uh, we, we talked about that and, um, Let's go ahead and wrap up for this week. So uh, we've got through our hour here. So uh, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. Support the show by buying me a coffee at InTouchWithIOS.com slash coffee. We would really appreciate it. You also can become a patron of the show by going to Patreon.com slash InTouchWithIOS. We have two tiers available. You can support the show. We would really appreciate it. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we are live streaming on our YouTube channel, which is usually on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. And that's at youtube.com slash intouchedios, where we live stream, as well as uh, the audio and video of the shows are are available there on the channel. Um, You also can go to In Touch With iOS Magazine on Flipboard, where many of the articles and topics that we talk about are flipped into that magazine. The link is in the show notes. Uh, you can subscribe to the show in your favorite podcatcher, in, including uh, Mimir, uh, Pocket Cast, Overcast, and uh, many others. But better yet, go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Dan was saying, thank you so much for being here. Uh, let, let everybody <laughs> well, thank you t- for having me. Let, tell everybody about uh, Dan's tutorials and where everybody can find you. 
Uh, you can find me at uh, dancetutorials.com, not dance, not in the dancing side. Yeah. You don't want to see me do that, <laughs> but dance tutorials. And uh, basically, I, I create uh, easy to follow video tutorials on how to use a Mac, iPad, iPhone, um, Apple Watch, and Apple TV. Kind of got a little sample of how it all works with uh, what I do. Yeah. And it's a membership site, just like with Je uh, Dave. If you um, like what you see, I just uh, ask for your support. It's a one man operation, small business. and you're helping support a small business, so absolutely. Yeah. You got a great site, and you also got your YouTube channel too, which is great. You got uh, I got yeah. yes, I'm 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 venturing out in the YouTube arena. It's I'm still kind of working on it and all that, but yep, I am venturing out in the YouTube. YouTube channel has about 150 videos on it. My website has about 1600, so there's a big big gap there. there but there yeah. is, but yeah, you, you do you read some great content. Thanks again for being here, Dan. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff Gamut, as always, thanks for being here as well. And uh, where can people find you? How about Twitter and Instagram? Jay Gamut on both. YouTube.com slash Jay Gamut for my occasional videos, um, at which actually includes one that uh, some of the listeners might find useful tonight, which is uh, on on using a DAC with your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. I might find that useful. Yeah, um, I, I need more info now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> um, anyhow, I get around uh, Mac Voices Live here with you, the big show, the Mac show, and the context machine with Brian Chaffin. Yes. Thank you so much, Jeff. Warren Musclar, thanks as always for being here. Where can people find you? Uh, it's not important. Um, Dan, pleasure meeting you. Yes. For the first nice time. Meeting. It, it was great. Um, definitely would like to do that again. Jeff, always, always good. Um, but yep, thanks for having me. Great. I'll be back. Don't don't worry. You'll you'll see me again somewhere, <laughs> like a, like a bad cold. Well, appreciate you being here, uh, and thank Bye. you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show. We enjoyed doing it, and we'll talk again soon. Mm -hmm.